it was a very, very tranquil place when you just hit the lake and it's made like it's absolutely huge. I didn't anticipate it being so absolutely massive and that, that's just one of the stunning things about it. And it's, it's completely isolated. You can go onto the, onto the banks of the lake and look for miles around and there's just nothing but rainforest. And that's, that's quite surreal. When we're getting up to marine camps, I you'd open up your tent door and there'd be a glacier below you and you kind of just you have that brief minute of, am I really here? It was, it was pretty fantastic. We arrived to temperatures of minus 25, which is a big shock to the system. Even though they were coming out of winter in England, it's still a lot colder out there and there's very little daylight. So just the initial sort of arriving there was very strange. In the jungle, when you're sleeping in the tents, you can hear all the animals, night time. Being there was just amazing, just the scenery. Um, looking out onto a frozen fjord, looking at the sunset, looking at the midnight sun, looking at the northern lights. We saw tons of dolphins jumping and it was really, really exciting. The first one we saw, everyone sort of pointing out, going, oh look, there's a dolphin over there, there's a dolphin to the right. Every day is really exciting and every day there's something new and you just come to expect that. We uh, had three or four science projects. The main one involved surveying glaciers to see their rate of movement and then we also did a bit of fossil hunting and we were looking for snow algae samples. What we had to do is try and plant the trees that was in the rainforest a bit further up to like get the animals to come out further and then they'll eat the fruits and then plant the seeds so then the forest would get bigger. We learnt about for example, global warming straight away, simply because upon arrival, our plan was to cross a frozen fjord. That year, the fjord had not frozen, and that changed all our plans. My favourite was the turtles, actually. We went on to the beaches and would look for the eggs, collect them, take them back to the hut and sort of bury them, wait for them to hatch. It was fantastic catching all these exotic species of birds. Things like the hummingbirds and that were fantastic colours. Just a kind of once in a lifetime experience. I don't ever kind of envisage myself holding a hummingbird again. Basically, you go out in a boat, you look for crocodiles in the water, and you, you noose them, catch them, bring them into the boat, and uh, measure them and stuff. And so some of them were quite docile, some of the smaller ones. I mean, we caught a very, very large one. We caught a two and a half metre one, I think, which is one of the biggest the, the guys have caught. And you measure, you do all these different measurements, and that's quite good because it, it helps to see how the species are developing and also which type of species is there in the area, which is all essential work, really, for conservationists. But the people are amazing. It was, it was a really good mix of people. And uh, I was a bit nervous at the briefing weekend. I was like, oh, what are the people going to be like? Are they all going to be like super trooper, sort of really expedition-y based people? You know? But it was nice to meet people from all over the country and with a very wide range of interests. And it was from a different environment for me. We all had like, similarities. Like, we still liked similar things and we can get on and, and talk. It was really nice as well to meet people from different cultures to you, different you know, they've had different upbringings and just to get away from like what you've been brought up with really. You kind of knew you was going to be different, totally different people to you, but you kind of realised that you aren't as different as you think you are. The physical side of it was well paced, particularly because we were at altitude. There was no pushing yourself too hard, you went at the pace of the slowest person. So I, I never felt that I or anyone else was particularly left out from any of the experiences. If someone's struggling and you want to push on, then you pick up some of their kit and carry it for them. And that, that really balances us out. All the little grumbles you heard at the beginning and all the worry you just went out the window because you were just adapted to a different way of life and you become used to living in those conditions and you just don't have any problems, I find. Fundraising, at first I thought, uh, I can't really do it, and I'd really have difficulty with all the deadlines, but in the end, it worked out. When you're on the expedition, you kind of think to yourself, I've actually funded myself to do this. It gets a lot more out of the expedition, because you know that your parents haven't been paying it. So if you just stick onto it and, and carry on doing what BSDS planned for you to do, you'll end up in a flight and you'll have a good time. I think I learned a lot about interacting with people and getting on with completely different people who perhaps didn't have much in common with me, but we all had to kind of knuckle down, work together, sleep together, live together, cook together. I would say that I've learned how to cooperate with people more, because when we was on the expedition, like certain people that were struggling with 
holding their bags or trying to help. When you're put into a situation where you're with a group of seven people you don't know at all, you really do have to work as a team to get you know the job done for the day. For the actual expedition, quite a lot of people would have called me a lazy person. In the expeditions, I kind of learned to kind of get up early, do my thing early and so on, and that's kind of come through in real life now and I'm kind of more organised and so on. I feel after the expedition, I'm um, kind of much more confident and capable person. Other people who are considering going on a BSS expedition, I'd say definitely go for it. It's one of the most amazing experiences. I mean, I've got friends who went on other expeditions with other companies, looking at their photos, looking at my photos, their experiences and everything compared. I think I'd say I've got a lot more out of it and achieved a lot more. And also, not only do you get to do the trekking, but with the science work as well, it's like an integrated thing, which I think just makes it a lot more interesting. Not a lot of people could say that they've been to Madagascar, stayed there for five weeks and climbed mountains and that. It will change their life and is accomplishment. It's a once-in-a-lifetime once experience and you should do it.